So for this next series, I'm shifting gears quite a bit. I've had some carving on projects and the channel and some more three-dimensional carving, but this is going to be a, a relief carving project. So it should be about two videos. Um, it's going to be a little bit slower pace than most of my other videos, just because if you speed up the footage of the carving, it's kind of hard to tell what's going on. And um, I want this to be as educational as possible. I am not a master carver. I think I can do stuff like this fairly well. Um, but I also think rendering, this is a succulent, rendering foliage is, is one of the easier things to do because... Uh, it's easy to fix mistakes when you have somewhat, not necessarily a symmetrical pattern, but a repetitive pattern. If you mess up one of the leaves, you could very easily extend or shorten a curve and it's easier to hide. So if you wanna get into carving, this is a great sort of project to tackle, which is one of the reasons I filmed it. Like I said, this is about 80% done. The leaves, uh, the, the petals without tape are the ones that I've pretty much sanded and are ready to go. There'll be um, a ladybug on top of this, but in general, like I said, a very simple, simple carving. Um, since I voice over most of these videos, and like I said, the footage, I'm not gonna speed up as much as I usually do so that you can get an idea of what's going on in the footage. There's probably gonna be a little bit more blank spots in, in the voiceover in this audio. I don't wanna keep repeating the same things over and over again. But hopefully, um, if you wanna get into carving or you wanna try your hand at carving, this is a, a project you can tackle. And like I said, this should only be about two parts and these videos should be shorter compared to ones I usually post. So to start this project I had to blow up the image because this is going to be about 14 inches in diameter. To do that I just split it into quadrants on Photoshop, blew them up, and then printed them out. That didn't match perfectly but matched enough that I could trace the pattern and tweak it a little bit. This isn't going to be a Photoshop tutorial so if you don't have Photoshop and you're not versed in Photoshop you can bring your original image to a place like Staples or FedEx Kinko's and they can blow up the file and print it out large for you. Um, I don't know how much that costs because I haven't done it in a while, but that is an option if you, you don't have the computer savvy to do it yourself. So then I just lightly taped this all together. I didn't want the tape to get in the way of tracing the pattern. I'm going to be carving this out of cypress. I've never carved on cypress before, but I had a chunk of it already um, jointed and glued together from a, another project I did a few months ago, which also means it's dried out lumber, so it was the perfect size for this. Now, when transferring these patterns, I used to use a wood burner, which is an option, but it takes um, a lot longer. I saw someone use uh, carbon copy transfer paper before, and that is now what I do. And the nice thing about this is this is using four sheets, but I could easily reuse this paper. Um, to transfer, I don't use the tip of a pencil. I, sh I, sh I um, cut off the lead tip and just use the blunt edge of the wood to transfer all the pieces. And since this is a succulent, this is going to be very easy. The leaves don't have any veins or any sort of detailing in them. They're going to be very flat. So that's all I have to transfer is pretty much the, the outline of, of all of the I actually don't know if you call the the tips of succulents leaves, but for the this the purpose of this video, that is what I'm going to be doing. And then you could see it just transfers onto the piece, carving the ladybug separately, just so that it has more dimension and makes my life a little bit easier actually doing it separately. And then just because I don't, I'm going to be rubbing up against the surface a lot with my hand and I'm wearing a jacket because it's winter, I'm going to go through and darken all of my lines with the pencil. Makes them easier to see, it's also easier to see on the camera, and that is my rough outline. So at this point I'm going to go through and cut it out. I'm using a scroll saw for this, which is a little bit of a slow process considering this lumber is a little over an inch thick. However, um, my jigsaw doesn't leave a super nice cut and using the scroll saw is worth it because all of my edges will be just about perfect. I won't have to go back through and sand them. But if you don't have a, a scroll saw, by all means, a jigsaw will get the job done as well. And then um, the back side of this, I'm going to be tapering all the leaves. You're going to create a lot of your dimension with um, relief carving by creating shadows, which will create depth. 
And to start off, I'm going to go back and, and, and trim this down more later, but just to start, just to get the beginning of that depth, I'm just rounding over the back side of, of the piece. You could see it already is starting to create a shadow on the table and make it more three-dimensional. So I added a cleat to the back of this with inch and five eighths inch screws, just a scrap piece of wood. That way I can put this in my clamp and it won't move on me while I'm carving. This is a relief carving and I'm assuming it's going to, this backside will never be seen. So if it has two screw holes in it, it's not a huge deal. The tools I'm using for this are a set by Shaft Tools. This is not a sponsored post. I bought these tools at least two years ago at this point. Like I said, I don't do a ton of carving but um, they're a very cheap introductory set of tools if you don't want to spend a lot of money on chisels. Like I said, I'm not a professional carver. I haven't been trained in carving, so I'm not going to go through and tell you what sort of gouges or straight edges I'm using because to be perfectly honest, I don't know them. And at this point, the numbers have been um, kind of worn off the handles, but that is the kit I'm using. So in order to start all this, what I'm making is a stop cut. You could see I used... Um, just a, a carving knife to originally make those cuts in there and then I could take a gouge and cut up to those marks. That's a stop cut. You're breaking the fibers of the wood on the line and then you could go through and start removing some of that material. At some point you don't have to keep making the stop cuts but if you don't make the stop cut um, it will just lift up the fibers past the lines. So that cut is that stop cut with 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 breaking up the fibers is what's going to start giving you the original dimension and all i'm going to do at first you can see is go through and make a light um a light divot leading up to all of my lines and this is where i'm initially creating which leaves are going under which other leaves which leaves are laying over the other ones so i just went through on the outside and you could see once i made that stop cut I went through and started removing some material in the middle. As I went along, I decided to switch over to um, a straight chisel in order to make that stop cut a little bit deeper off the bat so I didn't have to um, keep going through with the knife. And you could see I'm just using a gouge to remove that material. When I take the first layer down, um, I go through and remake that stop cut so it doesn't lift up any of my pieces. And then I'm just gonna go through, work from the back you could see the, the rough line I'm drawing and working up to with that gouge and then going um, always towards towards that, that edge there. That's where that depth's creating. It's making it look like this back leaf is going underneath the leaves on top of it. You could see um, I get about a quarter of an inch down on all of these. Keep, keep doing that stop cut, especially since this is a soft wood, it easily does chip. There were parts of this I did chip off and have to glue back, but I drew the grain lines on there. You could see I'm, I'm kind of going towards the grain lines with an angle, and that, that will keep it from, from chipping off a little bit. And then if you flip your chisels upside down, I could create a curve on the edge of all of those leaves. And that's just the initial roughing out I'm doing could also use the, the chip knife to do that as well but that's basically what I'm going for it's a very shallow um, back to front curve as well as side to side curve that I'm creating on all of those leaves so then at this point I'm also going through and this is going to be the undercutting I'm doing so the undercutting it just like the the curves I made on the back side of the piece is going to create shadows and that's what's going to make this look more three-dimensional than what it actually is. So on those edges, like I said, I did cut one about a quarter inch down. I'm going to cut that in half, so about an eighth inch with an angle and a chisel, a skew chisel. I'm just going through and, and, and cutting, making an undercut under those leaves. You could see it just goes in at an angle creating those shadows. At this point, this is all very rough. I'm not cleaning up any of this, just just creating those initial cuts. So once again, I usually don't draw the grain lines on here, but I'm going to do it so that it's a little bit easier to tell what's going on. I reinforce that stop cut. Obviously, the grain is going differently on this leaf, and I'm just going to angle it into the grain on both sides so I don't get any chip out, and I'm roughly cutting this short of that outer edge of the leaf. 
with this gouge, I'm just going to keep going through. Pretty simple stuff. Reinforce that stop cut and then, and then bring the gouge in again until I get about a quarter inch down on all of these leaves. And then go through and just lightly round over the edges of these as well. So then this inner portion, which I guess is, we're going to call just like a plant towards the bulb. Like I said, I, I'm not sure if the terminology is the same for, for succulents as it is for plants. But I didn't get a ton done on this. This will mostly be tackled in the second video. And that's just because with the chisels I have, the, they're a little bit too big for this detail work. So I can only get um, this done a little bit in the middle. I'm going to have to power carve most of the center of this bulb. But you can see it's the same principle. Only as you get towards the bulb, the, the leaves become more vertical. So I'm going a little bit deeper and, and um, not making the, the, the gouges as broad. But this is essentially the roughing out is done at this point. Then I'm going to go through and like I said, this is just doing more undercutting. Once I had this all done, the, the perimeter leaves, all the ones towards the edge, they weren't as deep as I wanted. So I went through and every single one of those perimeter leaves, I made a little bit deeper, reinforced it, and then did the undercutting as well. So you can see all I'm doing is, is taking everything just slightly, slightly deeper. You can see these ones I did, creating those nice shadows, making these, these leaves look like they are in fact layered on top of each other. This is an example of one I haven't done yet. It was just very shallow, that initial pass I did. You could see um, that edge, the shadows I created, and then the, the other side on the other edge, the ones I haven't done yet. So that's the difference. These ones that you're looking at haven't been done yet, and these ones have. You could see the difference just by adding some more, some more depth. There's not a lot of undulation or anything in these. Succulents are pretty, pretty broad leaf, not a lot of detail. So once all that roughing was done, I do do a little bit of power carving. I have a set of, of die grinding bits. I'm just going through and, and knocking down all of this. These fibers that didn't come down with, with the chisels and whatnot, you don't have to do this step. You could do this all with chisel work. It's just a little bit faster with power carving. You could see it's just um, really just flattening those, those pieces so I don't have as much sanding to do just going around and cleaning everything up essentially, not really adding any more depth. And then I have a little bit of a more pointed bit and that can get in the undercutting. That's gonna remove a bunch of those flakes and pieces from the undercutting. This really just makes it easier to see because after this, the next step I'll do is I'll go through and really reinforce those undercuts and that will start to give this a lot more dimension than what you see now. This just kind of removes that material so it's easier to see. So then here is, is reinforcing the undercutting. This is probably the longest, most painstaking part of the process because you are working underneath these leaves. I'm trying not to break off those tips, which at this point are very fragile. And I am going pretty deep underneath these leaves. You can see I'm just creating a stop cut on the edge of that, that ledge I created and then just going down at an angle to make it look like that one leaf is underneath those two. This is a little bit of a better view. You can see I'm going through at an angle, removing that material, and then I just keep doing that until it gets deeper and deeper and deeper, those undercuttings under those leaves. So you can see this is a, a better view of just how deep I'm getting underneath of there. And then towards the edge there, I haven't done yet. And once again, the goal here is to create those shadows. That's, that's what will give you the look of the illusion, at least, of more depth. And then once that was all done, I went through with, with a very fine uh, pointed die grinder bit and just cleaned it up. And that's pretty much where I'm at now.